What's up, everybody? What's happening, family? And welcome back to another episode of Is, is This, this Going to Cause, cause an, an Argument? argument? My name is Angel Tanksley, a.k.a. Angel Akita Moore, a.k.a. Fat Chick with three and double ACP image awards. Angel, and she's here with her husband. You see, I ain't got my notes like I usually do because my throat ain't doing right. But um, I still wanted to give y'all something because I always love y'all. But I don't want to take no more time. Let I'm me I'm the other host of this. is going to cause an argument. Marcus this Tanksley, a.k.a. Man. Tank. Thank yes. you for joining us. This is a podcast. Me and yeah. my wonderful wife, we do every single week. Yes. Ooh, y'all got all my thighs today. Stop talking. Vocal rest. Remember I said you don't know how to shut the hell up? Hey, so if you know, I don't know how. That's why you ain't got no pipes now, because you talk too much. Nah, I take the pipe. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's a podcast we do. <laughs> Me and this silly-ass woman over here do every <laughs> single week. And uh, we're a married couple, and we talk about whatever the hell we feel like it. That's pretty much sums it up. And uh, we have a good time doing it, and it's, it's going to cause an argument, because sometimes it does. We're a married couple, and we real ones, all right? We ain't out here selling the uh, fairy tale. Things happen. Sometimes you have turbulence. Uh, what type of damn turbulence that we didn't had? Give it time. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like things happen. I mean, what no, happened? I'm just saying it's like everything ain't like oh yeah. So we're happy. We're, we're always happy, but you know you have disagreements. Okay, a disagreement is a turbulence. We have. That's why I said what type of turbulence? You said things happen, and I'm like, don't leave it open ended. Like I was saying, thank you for proving my point. Thanks. Uh, we Next always joined by our media family. That media family exactly. is our Patreon. All you got to do is go to exactly. patreon.com slash that chick angel. You can sign up for the low, low of $5 a month. Would you shut up? Yes, I said it. We tell each other to shut up. If you offended, who cares? Why are um, you so rude? Because people are like, oh, he told her to They can up. say that. Oh, they you can never be tell your queen. That's why you ain't got no king. Then why are you so rude? <laughs> anyway, we yeah. always joined by our media family. They watching us right now. They watch us film this live. Angel, we you are being rude. Well, you being rude by telling our audience that's why they ain't got no king. Apologize and I'll shut up. I apologize to the people that don't get offended by me telling her to shut up. If you get offended by that, shut up. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we joined by our media family. It's my fourth time saying that. That's part of that's our Patreon. You can go to uh, patreon.com slash that chick angel sign up for the low low of five dollars a month and be a part of that Patreon. We're watching them right now. They're watching us have this discussion, this non turbulent environment that we're in right now, because we don't have it. Um and things don't happen, apparently. I didn't say things don't happen. I said define things. Don't leave it open ended. Anyway, do we have sponsors? Actually, we do. Well, who Can are I those talk sponsors? now? Can I talk? You may talk. See that? You're the <laughs> power to the man. <laughs> we are sponsored today by amazing new sponsor, Lola V, which is hair care. I can't wait to tell you all more about them, as well as Shopify, product that me and Marcus use every single day, and Nextevo, another product that we use every single day mm -hmm. we'll tell you more about them later on in the podcast um and we'll give you promo codes for you all to get a good old discount okay and if we talk about a product that you like or that you're like i'm interested in please by all means give them a try and use our promo code to let them know that we sent you mm -hmm. what's right. it like angel to be annoyed by you on a regular basis i was gonna say to have skin that looks good with everything Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't I don't think it does, but I, I'm glad that you feel that way. I think I do do well with citrus colors, warm colors, more than cool colors. Like you, you look really good with warm colors. You look good with cool colors too, but warm colors look really, like reds look good mm -hmm. on you. But sometimes that light blue, that does it for me. Oh, yeah. They wanted to know what was on your hat in our Patreon. Oh, Patreon will know. It's uh, the uh, 55th NAACP Image Awards Golf uh, Invitational. I keep calling it a tournament, but it was an invitational. You going to take that back? Oh, which one? Are you still back there? Ah, there it is. Just, let's make sure it was. Look at put your big arm. Let me see if they were able to see it. Yeah, yeah they see. did. 
Um, my mother said she's just playing with your son. Um, anywho, anyway, anyhow, we love to start our episodes off with one or two segments. And we're going to start it off with our oldest segment, In My Feelings. Let me tell you what's got me in my feelings. I got something making me feel good. In My Feelings, which Marcus can never remember the title of, <laughs> even though it's the longest segment he's ever done as a podcaster. Not the most. See, that's the difference. Why you say it's not the most? That's not the most I've, uh, segment, the most frequent segment I've done as a podcast. It's because I've done it the longest don't mean I've done it the most. You think that you and Greg have done y'all segment more than what we've done in my feelings in nine years? We do it every episode and we have 88 episodes. And we have, I think, almost over 400. Uh -huh. But we don't always do it every week. I know, but you think we... Uh, we've, I've done it the most consistently. Okay. We'll say that. Okay. Consistently. That's why... I, I ain't no room for error over here, y'all. Go ahead. No, it's all about clearly communicating. Clearly communicating. He's the only one. He's, he's sassy today. Nobody sassy? Yeah, you are. You, you told our people to just shut I said the, the, the sensitive ones. Nobody will hear all that shit. It's okay if we hear it. It's fine. That's the privilege we get to be able to have a mic and get paid to have it. She should leave him. He told her to shut up. Who going to leave you? Who going to leave who? <laughs> the person saying it. Oh, you're so rude. <laughs> you're rude. What's it got you in your feelings? Um, You go first. Uh, Obviously... What's got me feeling some type of way is my voice. Um, I believe, and I think I talked about this the last episode. I believe that while I was on a black lady sketch show, there was a specific sketch where I had to scream a lot. Now, I'm not talking about like little screaming. I'm talking about uh, like scream, scream. And that was for a day. And I felt by, by the end of the day, my vocal cords burning. It was like a full day, though, right? Yeah, full yeah. day. I felt my vocal cords burning. Next day, they felt fine. I was like, bet. Um, next day, I had, uh, did I have Kitty Kitty Boom Boom the next day? Kitty Kitty Boom Boom didn't have to scream, but she had to project. But again, my vocal cords felt fine. I have noticed, now that was over a year ago. I've noticed over the past year how much more quickly my voice gets fatigued. Now, mind you, I am a person who went and got her master's in fine arts. I took three years of intense vocal and speech classes, vocal and speech classes to learn how to support myself. Because if you're an actor, especially a theater actor, and you're one that's actually making good money, that means you're performing probably eight times a week. So these are things that you have to know because your livelihood is connected to what your voice can do. So I actually know <laughs> how to be able to do this for a long period of time. So once I realized not only was my voice fatiguing quicker, then I started to notice my range in vocal range starting to shut down some like to truncate mm -hmm. um, my top notes weren't as high my bottom notes weren't as low when especially when my voice would get a little tired uh and then kevin and i went on tour and my voice is like while i'm on stage i'm gucci as long as there are certain songs we don't sing i'm gucci and i can i still got some notes for that ass right on stage but again we do things like this podcast by the time i get through one ad read my voice is like as you all can already hear, I had to go ahead and drop my voice even lower for this podcast today. And so it almost sounds like I'm sick. I'm not, though. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like I am. I ain't got no extra mucus. I haven't been out here coughing. I mean, I did almost choke on my breakfast sandwich, but I haven't yeah, been. I was going to say, you almost had to resuscitate you earlier. You didn't almost choke. You choked on your breakfast yeah, sandwich. Yeah, uh, the smallest particle <laughs> went down my throat. I was like, mm -hmm. well, I'm about to die. So, um, I am frustrated because I'm not just now an actress. I am also a podcaster. I do multiple podcasts on the week. 
I'm about to go back into the studio to finish my EP. I want to have a better voice for all of that. But I also feel like I'm going to now have to push through to the end of the EP and then be able to take like, like a for real. But luckily with the EP, I'm not on stage like, yeah, it's me close to a mic like this and I won't have that. But yeah, you won't uh, technically don't need to raise your voice. Yeah, the mic's the mic right anyway. there. Yeah, if anything, you're going to be too loud. Yeah, so um, that's just got me feeling some type of way. Uh, Marcus will tell you I don't get, I don't really get sick often. I don't have a lot of body pain. I do have body pain today because my husband threw me on the floor yesterday doing one of our couple challenges. Tanksley tried yeah, it. Because I don't play that shit. I mean, toss my my big toe. Yeah. I pray it's not fractured. I slammed Angel. I got a scab on my knee. Mm-hmm. Drug across the carpet. And then I did the challenge with Kennedy the first try. It went smooth. First try. That's That's what it is. He almost ripped my armpit skin. Mm. It's just a lot. But I'm not used to things, my body not doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> By now, you should be used to it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No. <It's> like, <laughs> what, what, at what age did your knee just randomly start? You know what? Pause. <laughs> no, actually, my knees are good. It, no, no, no. I, in the mo- in this moment, for the, maybe the past little while, yes. But I'm saying, at what age did you remember randomly, like, we'd just be walking and all of a sudden your knee would just be like, ah, don't touch me. It wasn't my knee, it was my hip. No, your knee. Your hip happened after that. This is after you had a kid. We would be on our way to church. This is at the Ruffner. Mm-hmm. You'd be walking in heels, and all of a sudden, your knee would just be like, man, I'm going to take the next 10 seconds off. <laughs> and buckle. <laughs> I don't fully remember that being my knee, but I believe you. (laughs) I believe you. So, yeah, it's just frustrating. I know there's probably other people going through it, but. uh, It's it's definitely frustrating when you have an ailment that just comes out of nowhere that you can do. You didn't do anything to antagonize it, and it just shows up. Well, I did antagonize this, but. Well, yeah, I mean, but it should have healed by now. Like, you ain't done nothing extra. Yeah. You just going on to live your life, and it's like. Hey, but remember this? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's got me in my feelings? You know, I vent a self to my life. Uh, what was I trying to say? Just stroked out. I vent a lot to myself, uh-huh. sp- specifically in the morning. Um, just driving. That's when I'm, my mo- I'm at my most irritable because, like, people are hustling, trying to get to work, school, wherever. And that's when I'm usually at my most irritable. Like, I'm just cussing everybody out my mind. It's just like, why, why y'all driving so stupid? Mm-hmm. Why is this person doing that? Why you got that stupid dog wearing this stupid vest? Like <laughs> everything. Everything. So it be you. yeah. So by the time I get in front of a camera, I'm just like, oh, I'm good. Ain't nothing bothering me because I I vent. It's good to vent. It's good to let it out. You don't hold it in. I I know. Why do you, I feel like so many things annoy you though? You have a very very large annoyance. Um, uh, would you call it net? That net is huge. Here's the thing, though, uh, and I actually said this to you. This is I don't know a few months ago. Um, just because something uh, is annoying to me doesn't mean I'm annoyed. You remember we was at an event and like these people behind us, they was extremely like loud and just obnoxious, and I was just like, that's very annoying. Or they, they're very annoying. I just said they're very, and they're just like, oh, we just got here. You already annoyed. I was like, no, I didn't say I was annoyed. I said they're annoying. It's a big, big difference. I think it's a big, big difference for you. It is not a big, big difference for how it affects me when I hear it. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. But it's I, a big difference. Yeah, for you. Period. For you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. So something has got me. I t- no, I didn't, oh, I just talked about it yesterday. So it's going up tomorrow on Friday about the cat food commercial. <laughs> what, which one? How people be loving these animals. Continue. The I don't know. Be, I told you the the cat commercial where the woman's like sitting there petting her cat and the little boy's upstairs playing. He's like, "Mom, I fell." She was like, "Get a band aid." He's like, yeah. "It's bleeding." Get to, you know, the priority is the cat. You know, I'm like, I can't believe that they let that slide. And ain't, and Karen's ain't in a big uproar about her neglecting her child versus oh, they you will be. drinking a wine cooler in the closet. You know, parenting can be, why Mama do you Mosa? have to be an alcoholic just to be a mom? This is offensive. Mm, that was They're letting that slide. But, you know, Karen's going to love these animals. Uh, they going to complain about that, too. That commercial been running for a minute. 
You don't think they've complained? Oh, it would have been snatched down. No, it. They don't pay the what they paid me for Tropicana or what they put in those the social media ads. That's what it was, Tropicana. They can. That's easier to pull. Once you start spending that TV ad oh, money, yeah. <laughs> they just gonna have to be mad for today. <laughs> they gonna have to be mad. Ooh. Um. So me, but, but what were you? What was your? I ain't got nothing in my feelings right now. That'd be so crazy. Like, y- y'all Here's don't the, thing, it, the, the bucket is full. I don't know what to pick from. <laughs> it's not that I ain't got nothing. It's just, it ain't spilling over, so it, everything's contained. This I don't need to talk crazy. about it. Marcus, literally, again, because we haven't done it in a while, Marcus's gift, he can complain about just about Bring anything. Bring something up then. Run and it. So when he... Run it. Hold on. Let me finish what I'm saying. <laughs> when he doesn't have anything for in my feelings, I'm like, who is this man? But how? How? why can't it be just me stating how something makes me feel versus just me being annoyed or complaining? It's just me stating how I feel. I think that this person walking down the street with a dog in a stroller that has more legs and energy than them is stupid. That's all I'm gonna say, man. That's stupid. It ain't like, oh, oh, I ain't complaining. That's just something stupid. Right, I just that noticed is not it a and complaint. verbalized. You're right. That's not a complaint. That's nine, 99 percent of the time. That's what I'm doing. I'm just making a statement. You see it as complaining. I just said it's not complaining. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like a lot of times you'll see it as complaining. You know what it is? Me and him had this talk once before. We had it before we were married. I and it is just, I think, just where his mind is set. Marcus will verbalize the negative thought a lot sooner than the positive yeah. thought. So when I hear a lot of negative thoughts, it mm-hmm. yes, I am incorrectly titling it as complaining. Yeah. But what I'm really just saying is I'd be like. I, I worked on this. I've been working you have on been. it. You have. You have definitely. We got a treadmill delivered yesterday. <laughs> The only thing, Angel's like, you see the treadmill? I'm like, yep. And I didn't say anything else because the only thing I was thinking of all the negatives that came along with this enormous treadmill. But that's and that, <laughs> and I didn't say anything. But that be for me, like for me as your wife, I be like, and I have to just realize this is the way you're wired. It still is still like does that to me, Ugh. um, like. How the negative get to your brain so it I mean it shoots there. That's my career. That's how I was hardwired. <laughs> like, I know. I said I'm like having to everything realize everything should be right. What's wrong though? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it is like so. Let's get rid of all the negative. Let's get rid of everything that need to be fixed. Now we can focus on. Oh yeah. So this, that, and that is very good. I'd be like, oh, okay, all right, oh, for and I, that's just how we're different. I I might see the negative, right? But if it's a, like especially a situation that I don't care to put energy into changing, excuse me, I'm going to quickly shift my attention to the thing that either I like or that's positive. If it's not a situation, like again, I'll say if it's not a situation or a thing that I am willing to put any energy into changing. So the person with the dog with the stupid vest and they they uh, broke down, I'd be like, huh, <laughs> that is literally what my brain would go. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not. I'm just saying I'm just letting them know how how I, we both think differently about stuff. All right. That's it. Now I want to tell you all about <sighs> these amazing people. Listen, here's I was about to say here's. The thing. Listen, is this going to cause an argument, listeners? This episode is brought to you by Lola V. Yes, an award winning hair care line founded by the fabulous Jennifer Aniston. And listen, what I'll give Jennifer Aniston, because I actually I enjoy her as an actual actress. I think she is hysterical. Uh, we be especially on the morning show. I don't even know if I can bring this up in the ad read. I enjoy hair. But I, what I also will say is Jennifer Aniston's hair has been hairing for a very long time. We, Me as a black woman, uh, it's not that I have wanted her hair, but I've thought her hair was gorgeous. Okay? Um, so anyways, imagine this. Jennifer was like, we all struggling with the same daggone thing. 
Um, try to find hair products that work and ones that are actually good. Now you don't have that problem no more, right? So we've all put our hair through a lot of things. Listen, especially as most of our listeners are uh, black women, we didn't did the coloring. We didn't did the 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 heat straightening and things of that nature and styling. Then we have stress. Then we also getting older. The list goes on and on and on. Over time, it takes a toll. That's why it's crucial to have products that not only repair the look of um, the damage, but also shields your hair from future harm. Enter Lola V, clean plant-powered products for every hair type and texture. And here's a treat for you, our listeners, our awesome listeners. For a limited time, you get 15% off your entire order at Lola V. Just use code ARGUE at the checkout. And I mean, listen... Jen, she's taking care of her hair. Jen, Jen's hair has been looking good from the start of her career to now. Because I be watching her, all right? Um, so I do love how the products feel, especially right now since my hair is straight. I like a more lightweight product because I don't want my hair to feel heavy. It's a little different than when my hair is in its natural straight, but natural state. But with me um, Blowing out my hair for this tour, having something really light on my hair is actually what I prefer. So um, their lightweight hair oil is perfect. It does not make my hair feel too heavy. And the fact that they're, um, there's no silicones, even their leave-in conditional one that you can spray, very, very light. Lo- I love it. First, let's talk ingredients. Lola V is all about natural, derived, plant-based goodness. No silicone, sulfates, parabens, or glutens. And, of course, cruelty-free and vegan. The In the Shower Trio of Restoration Shampoo and Conditioner plus Intensive Repair Treatment turn your shower experience into a spa-like treatment retreat Excuse me, while working it to banish breakage. Post-shower, the glossy de- Glossing Detangler. The perfect leave-in, that's what I was talking about, in the lightweight hair oil, our triple triple threat for your styling routine. Um, This multifunctional formula worked beautifully together to prime, prep, and finish for a silkier, shinier shinier Jennifer Aniston approved hair. Unlock Jennifer Aniston's approved hair at LolaV.com. Our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off of your entire order when you use code ARGUE at the checkout. That's 15% off your order at L-O-L-A-V-I-E dot com with promo code ARGUE. ARGUE. Please note that you can only use one promo code per order and discounts cannot be combined. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. All right. Well, what's got uh, you? What Did you come up with your complaint yet? I mean, your what's got you feeling? No, I thought you was going to do a, 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 what's it called? No, I want to finish the segment. Okay, okay. No, I was um was it's what's funny is I will I'll put this in my in my feelings, even though it don't have me in my feelings. I'm glad I did this. I so I went back to uh catch up with the comments and stuff. And I don't understand this ain't a complaint. I just don't understand uh, sometimes the disconnect between what somebody says on camera and where it goes in the comments. Um so a lot of people were saying uh you know, it's good to give grace. You know, I give grace now, or as I get older, I give grace. And what we were talking about had nothing to do with me giving people grace. Because a lot of times I think I'd fall to, to, my, uh, to a fault. Sometimes I give too much grace to people because I do like try to fall back on, let me try to understand where this person's coming from and not just going to 10. Like, first of all, you know, a lot of, I do like assess situations. So with stuff like that, like a, uh, who was this last week? No, nah, week before. Um, actually, somebody uh, asked me to comment on it. I I didn't on the episode we did of uh, Let Us Tell It. I was talking about the uh, nominations and stuff and how I like to celebrate mm-hmm. and how I was going to go back to do with me of celebrating the end of result versus mm-hmm. all the way through or the completion of something. And somebody in the comments said, you know, they, they're working with a, something about they're working with a teenager that's a lot like Marcus who doesn't want to be proud of himself and went missing for two weeks oh, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, it's disappointing to me that you're a professional and the conclusion you came up with is I don't want to be proud of myself. <laughs> they, it, like, and then, but it's, it's, it's almost like a... Uh, I get what they mean by grace, though, if you want me to 
help to, to yeah, do yeah, because I yeah, because what am I misunderstanding with that? I think you're thinking about grace as far as in how someone giving someone grace and how they deal with you or deal with a situation dealing with you. Mm -hmm. But even with like, if we're um, looking at something that doesn't deal with us, right? An outside situation. Typically we will pass a judgment on that outside situation. And I'm trying to think of something specific that would. Like the person with the dog in the stroller. Person with the dog in the stroller, uh -huh. you said they stupid, yes. right? <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> so grace would be no telling what that person is going through. If that makes them feel better, good for them. Yes, it, out loud, that's exactly something I would say. So that, but, but in my mind, I'm just like, you idiot. <laughs> so that, but no, but that would be what grace okay, is. Okay, I it's see. Just, all right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in, con in when conversing with people, I give grace. In situations, I always give grace. Uh, a lot of people say you. I seem very nonchalant and just like laid back when I approach certain situations. That's because I am. Regardless of what I'm thinking in my mind, that's what's going to be the upfront and mm -hmm. what you see. But back to this person talking about <laughs> with about that situation about he don't want to be proud of himself. That disappoints me. If you are a professional, of me saying I want to celebrate the end result. Yeah. All the I, way back to that disappoints me that if you are a professional, that you're a professional act and you actually supposed to be helping people that you will make a judgment like that off of hearing the way I like to operate and the way yeah. I've operated these 42 years I've been alive. Yeah. And I'm a very I'm very I'm extremely proud of myself and a very happy person, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like overly happy. Somebody asked me, uh, do I feel the love that I get from people? Ho hopefully that me and Angel feel the love and support that we get from people. I was like, yes, a lot of times it's overwhelming how much love we feel from people. I'm like, and I walk, I'll move throughout the world with that energy of like, this is crazy. Like these people are here to support us. We got Patreon right here talking to us. This is like, this is, wow, this is amazing. I've achieved this in my life. Like, this is beautiful. So for somebody to be like, he don't want to be proud of himself. Like, and you call yourself a professional, but in that's just like one out of, you know, many, that's nothing. But I'm just like, this is one of the reasons I stay out of comments. Like I don't go to people. A lot of times bring these to me and I'm just like, all right, what they say. Damn it. Like, <laughs> Well, I think if we on social media have a tendency to fill in the gaps in spaces that where there was no information given. And a lot of times we fill in the gaps incorrectly um i've watched so many videos about amanda oh god seals i was like what is her last name and about the video that she uh did that went viral uh where she was addressing the fact that in black spaces where they're honoring people uh, on a lot of occasions she's not invited she gave the example of the NAACP Image Awards, the BET Awards, and the fact that some of these spaces she's actually uh, been the host for the BET Awards. She hosted the virtual ones from her home. Mm -hmm. And there were people who were like, well, she's not invited because she's too real and, and she speaks up for what's right and that's why she's not invited. Well, I can tell you, that majority of these people, based off of their profile, where they say they're from, yada, 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 they have no idea why or why not. Right. But they are, they yeah. are filling in the blank mm -hmm. from their perception of what they feel like they've experienced. Um, none of us are the NAACP or the BET people, so we can't, I personally cannot speak to why why that's not happening for her. Mm -hmm. But I, people have done whole think pieces. Mm -hmm. about this is because she's an activist and they can't take that. And there's other people who have said negative things that potentially have never even met her before about why or why not. But I think in general, we as a people on social media, we take the little bit we're given and we will plug in all the things mm, yeah. in every other, regardless of That's, whether or not yeah. we know or not. <laughs> Social media has turned into me driving down the street thinking this person in, with this dog in the stroller is stupid to me rolling the window down and yelling at them, you know that's stupid. Versus me having a thought and moving on. <laughs> all the cellulite. Oh, Jesus. Huh? Let me turn. I oh. saw all the cellulite. And I feel like that's back. with social media. Like, I, I don't recall ever. I don't think I've ever said anything negative. 
about anything to anybody on social media other than responding to something that they may have said. <laughs> like, uh, I ain't never just openly... If you did, like, I saw a, a, a repaired video this lady did. A um, lot, lot of her stuff is actually really good, but I saw this one repair, and it didn't make sense whatsoever. And there was so many people in the comments like, actually, this is dumb. Why would you do that? I didn't bother to say that's her content. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't agree with it. I just, well, guess what I did? Pushed the back button and went on to the <laughs> next <laughs> thing. I didn't feel the need to put anything negative on her thing because apparently her following was bigger than mine. She's doing something right. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, what's got you feeling good? <laughs> so, he's so crazy. Well, there's multiple things. Uh, no, we can't even talk about one. I know. I would say what's got me feeling good is that uh, my mom and my son are about to take a trip of a lifetime. Tammy, we talking in general. <laughs> she came in late. Uh, Who we talking about? I over know. Here? <laughs> I love Tammy. Uh, my mom and my son are about to take a trip of a lifetime, and I'm so excited for the both of them. Um, and we were talking to our son about it last yeah. night. And I said, do you appreciate really what, like, the, gra the, the um, what is the word, gravity? I think that might be the word. Of this trip, like, the weight, uh, yeah, that's right, of what's getting ready to happen. And he was like, not really, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad he was honest about it. And I was like, one, this trip costs a lot of freaking money. So the all, off top, you should already just be like, thank you. He was like, I mean, I do know that. I was like, but you got to understand, you, you're only 14 and you're experiencing something your parents haven't hadn't even experienced. Um, you're experiencing something that your grandparents haven't experienced. You're about to experience it with one of them. And I was like, and so often black Americans don't get the opportunity to travel abroad until they're older if they even get to then. It is still considered a luxury yeah. for people who look like us. And we're trying to establish something for you that it won't be considered a luxury. Luxury, It'll feel commonplace for you to be able to travel to other countries, experience other cultures. Um, and uh, that's something that you're in. And not just that, that you're traveling with black people and other black boys your age that look like you. Mm -hmm. Um I was like, so I I said, the fact that you're doing this at 14 and your grandmother is doing it for the first time at 73, that should tell you of the significance yeah. of it. Yeah. I, Go ahead. No, I told him, I said, you've had one person throughout your entire family that's done something like this, at least close family, and that is your Uncle Pete or mm -hmm. his, his, my brother, whose name ain't Pete, but that's another story. Uh I said he was in the Navy, and that's the only reason why. Um, so, but I did, like Angel said, we did say, like, we want you to see this as normal and expected. Like, I want to go to other countries. I said, but we do want you to understand this ain't normal of y'all, but we want, we want y'all to grow up knowing that we should be able to do these things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so they, they're not just going to Paris. They're actually stopping in quite a few places, yeah. quite a few very nice places. I had was to, like. Had to book them rooms like, what? Huh? Where? I, I was uh, <laughs> I was so confused as I was getting the hotels and Airbnbs. I was like, wait, wait. They were, at one point in time, they were going to be going to Amsterdam. Another point in time, they were going to be going to Sweden. Switzerland, excuse Switzerland, me, yeah. Switzerland, um, Sweden, Sweden. Uh, that stuff got changed, but they are going to a couple of really nice places. And I, I understand him being young and like what he's into. It might not have as much impact right now, but I feel like once he gets older, it would. He, I think he'll just be able to see the difference between him hopefully becoming like a bit of a world traveler and someone who might not have been able to be a world traveler. Not that he's better than them in any ways, but he might have more insight on certain things just because he's been able to be around different people who think differently because the way their world has been carved looks different than the way his world has been carved. So I'm excited for them. I'm excited for my mom. She's over the moon. She been packing, overpacking, trying mm -hmm. to then change it and underpack. Um, that's that's black people though. 
Yeah, I know. I know white people that don't went overseas and they had one duffel bag, like one of them hiking duffel bags. Yeah. Just strapped down because all they got is hiking shoes and a bunch of uh, thin right. <laughs> workout clothes and, and a hat. <laughs> yeah. Like, and they were packed for three weeks. <laughs> Black <laughs> people like, go somewhere for eight days and it's right. just like, guys, 18 pieces of 100%. Like <laughs> what am I supposed to do with my hair? Yeah. What? <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Um, the, yeah, it's going to be great. So it's four black boys and three black mamas. My mama is one of the three black mamas um, all doing these uh, this travel together. And um, little Marcus owes us two things. He owes his mm. dad in words in Paris. Yes. Uh, a the, whole video. Yes, the entire video in front of the Eiffel Tower or somewhere. It don't have to be there, but it's going to be there. Mm. I want I want unscripted, not not unscripted. I want unedited. I want the real cuss words. Yeah, I tell all you of don't it. do that. Yes, everything. All the let the other parents they can come at me after they make the video. I want it. Um, that's his own. I said that's your only responsibility. If I don't get that, we gonna have problems. He uh, was about to say he. <laughs> He has already started memorizing the words because I I was in the kitchen <laughs> and I I hit him with the Anton Denton 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 Denton. Yeah, I want Denton, the phone on the ground. Denton, I want Denton, pointing up Denton, to the camera. Denton 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 Denton. I want I want all of that from you and your friends. <laughs> he he and, and once when we got he once we got to the start he was like ball so hard won't find me. Yeah, I want First, that. Gotta find me. <laughs> With 50 grand to, like me, can you please blind me? Ball so hot. Great. I was like, okay, I see. Your and granny, can, she can, your grandma can be a, a, a video, video vixen, vixen in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I want all of it. Great. Uh, <laughs> Melissa, his aunt, who's been to Paris when she was in high school, she was giving, she was like, I want you to go to the Chevrolet oh, Sotiva Sociera. You record some right. there. Yeah. Go to the Louvre and record in front of the Mona Lisa. And then record. That's where she went. She was like, she was giving them all these locations. She was like, in the you're going to yeah. shoot in front yeah, of that. One ear and out the other. <laughs> um, I told him I wanted a robust vlog. So hopefully that will be you all's first, uh, our first vlog back on YouTube is little Marcus's European adventures. Your mom gonna be like, and Jay Z can't. <laughs> <laughs> I see that, Doctor Cheek. You are hilarious, but yeah, M Mama gonna be up in there. She gonna mm -hmm. be like, "What we doing? That, uh, mm, that gray, mm, that gray. Yeah, wait, no, she gonna do the <laughs> doing it. <laughs> she could be. What does it mean? Uh, nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative. That's what Mama. <laughs> Um, so a robust, a robust vlog. I said, I want to see the foods. I want you talking to your friends in the vlog. Mm -hmm. I said, and I don't want this little stupid angle he does. Get it now, up that's here. for the music video. You go down to show yourself as powerful. When you're vlogging for the <laughs> vlog, I want eye level footage. Tim, do the Auntie Quinn. Yes. <laughs> okay, what event we at? You're going to see Quinn's little skinny ass arm go up in the air <laughs> holding his phone. <laughs> 18,000 times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be dope. It's going to be dope. Okay. What's got you feeling good? Uh, what's got me feeling good? Uh, as y'all know, we got Amar. It ain't got me feeling all the way good. We got Amar in the same school as the boys, so he'll be going there next year. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what don't have. I, that got me feeling good, but on the flip side of that, because I always see the negative, I thought about <laughs> next year. One of those days of dropping him off will be the last time we w hold our kids' hand and walk one of them into a new school. Oh, like we don't, you don't do that in college. You don't hold their hand. I you, bet you, you help I them. Will. You won't. You're gonna be packing stuff. You're gonna be trying to be the moving man because that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I thought about that. I was like, that's gonna happen. What's this? It'll this happen. year? Uh huh. Next school year, but this year that's gonna happen. I was just like. I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> um, and then from there, I just went down memory lane of mom and daddy and schools and stuff and all that. But that's got me feeling good. Just having all of them in the same school. Mm -hmm. That's going to, that's, yeah. And when I see him in his little uniform, I'm just not going to be able to take it. I'm not. Oh, yeah. He got to wear a uniform. Oh, he's going to be so cute in his little uniform. Hope, um, you think he'll still want his ponytail by then? Yes. He told us he don't want him wanted me to cut his hair no more because he wants a ponytail. 
And he gonna have that ponytail. He can get two right now, but he can't have one. Yet. Yeah, it's not long enough. I got a tape of the back. Um. So yeah, I'm I I am excited about that too. I can't believe my baby's growing up. I oh, just and that, that's that's when I thought about it. The way I thought about it was walking him in. It wasn't even walking him in. It was thinking about sending Marcus off to daycare for the first time in his little backpack. And I was just like, so you can ignore all that. Mark is getting older as long as you got somebody younger. Uh-huh. But then Amar bringing up the tail end and be like, end. and that's already passed with Marcus. He's he's at we at the end. We at the end. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Okay, we're gonna jump into um we're going to jump into the uh what do we call it? The main topic. Which one did we land on? <laughs> I don't know. That's why I just said I'm gonna let you have it. <laughs> oh, we're dating. So, because we talked about it on TBTB, there was a question that was asked on the Bald and the Beautiful about dating advice. Yeah. And, you know, people say Marcus, and Marcus specifically said on that, you know, we can't give advice because. No, getting back into dating, I said, you can't, it's not a good idea to ask people that have, that have been married 20 and close to 20 years getting back into dating because we the, everything has changed. The way people date ain't the same, ain't none of that the same. Once you're in the relationship and moving, you know, advancing through to get married and all that, we can step back in and give you advice on that. But as far as getting back into the dating scene, we the wrong people to ask. Yeah. I said, Angel can act like she knows she's talking about all she wants. Now, game don't change. I can tell you game all day oh, so and every well, day. So the advice that you give no, is no, good. Because yours wasn't talking that- about game. But, but no, yes. but, but why why but does also, yours yes. get to be right and mine Absolutely. don't get to be right? That's what it was. Mine is right, yours is not. Mine was right. Mine was spot no, on. I didn't actually. say yours is right. I was just saying getting back into the dating scene, I'm like, we can't speak to that. Well, no, there are certain things we can. Like what? What Lies. I was what I was saying <laughs> is that because everything like you were introduced to me via your through your sister. Yeah. So you had a good reference mm-hmm. for me. People nowadays are dating through apps where there might not be a one degree of separation. Yeah. It might be six. And it's an age difference, too. What do you mean? Like the people that are talk, talking about, you know, getting back into the dating scene. If it's somebody, one of our following, they yeah. probably going to be in they mid to late 30s, you know, late 30s, early 40s. I'm like, that was early 20s. So that's yeah. a big, big difference. So what? Uh, still, but what I was saying is, is basically check the Carfax reports. Mm-hmm. You got to start meeting the the people yeah, yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. connected to. So that's that is good advice, regardless of what day yeah, and age true. we're in. Now, that was a uh, what's her name? The one Risa Tisa. Risa that, Tisa. That was a reference that we gave of like yeah, you talk about you got brothers. Let's meet them. Let's let's go to the cookout. And the same thing is is just like um. What is I about to say? Uh, hmm? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I didn't just got pissed off. Anyways, uh, oh no, no, no. I'm no. It's nothing that you have to handle. I <laughs> let me put down my phone. Anyways, I said no. I ain't gonna say nothing. It's not. I talk to you about it later. Anyway, if we were dating. Uh huh. Newly dating. Yeah. At okay. forty, at forty two and forty eight. Are we going to do this with or without marriage? Huh? Have we been married before? Or are we? Or are we divorced? And going into the dating, or are we just finally? If are we inside of the? If I'm forty two and I ain't been married yet, I am trash. Me being me. Okay. You don't want me as no husband. <laughs> I might think I'm husband material, but by that time, no. Okay. I wasn't husband material when you married. <laughs> so, uh, so we're divorced. We're divorced, yeah. Okay. Nah, I don't, yeah, let's fuck it. I mean, need to just pretend. Which one? Let's do it. Let's do it. We ain't been married before. Okay. Before we jump into it, let me jump into these. No. Hey, always. <laughs> let's jump into our next sponsor, Next Evo. All right, so it, we well into the new year. We're about to be into the third quarter, but th- I mean, not third quarter, the second quarter, but still, it, this is time for you to be able to leave old habits 
behind you, things that did not serve you behind you. It's spring is about to sprung and you need to spring into some new actions. And uh, next Evo is here to work into your life the way you need it to work. With the next Evo natural CBD products, oil based CBD can be one of the things that you leave behind. Oil based CBD does not mix well with our water based bodies. So um, you absorb as low as 6% of the CBD on the label if it's an oil-based CBD. Next Evo Naturals developed a clinically tested water-soluble form of CBD. Their gummies and capsules are proven to work faster and absorb four times better than oil-based products. Go to nextevo.com and use code ARGUE, Argue. for 25% off any order for up to 60% off as a new subscriber. We love Next Evo in the Tanksley household. Marcus uses their sleep aid. I use their de-stressor. Um, I love it in the gummy form. He actually likes the um, capsules, uh, but it's good. I, I mean, it doesn't matter what form you take it in. It's all good and it, it works. all works, and that's what we care about. Does it work? Um, so you can get more of your CBD with Next Evo. Try their strongest gummies ever, the new Extra Strength Daily Wellness CBD gummies, which customers love. Or try their all-time bestseller, their Stress and Sleep CBD Complex products. Find new ways to use CBD with a variety of convenient options, including gummies, capsules, and dissolvable powders. And you can trust a brand with data. The, their products have been proven to be four times better than most oil-based products. They work fast. They absorb starting in just 10 minutes. Next Evo is the only brand that has conducted, okay, human clinical studies to test the value of their products. So whatever's on that label, you're going to get 100% guarantee. You ain't got to worry about it. No ma'am, no ham. Leave oil behind and start your new year with more effective and fast-acting CBD from Next Evo Naturals. Get 25% off any order or 60% off as a new subscriber by using code ARGUE, Argue. at nextevo.com. There's 25% off your order and up to 60% off as a new subscriber at nextevo.com with promo code ARGUE. ARGUE. Okay. So. Never been married. We never been married, and we can we can reduce our age some if you don't want to come off as trash. No, I'm gonna be trash. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make the best of this situation. <laughs> I'm gonna say since we've never been married, I'm gonna make myself like 35. No, I'm still 42. Okay, grays and all. So, what part of the dating landscape do you think you about to kill? Oh, I'm about to kill. Yeah. Uh. Now, mind you. Some of the things that I've noticed have changed about women mm -hmm. since when I was on the market to now. Yeah. Women expect more. Mm -hmm. They're not as easily impressed. And now there are some that are, but like they be the, the, the more they put into their own life, whether it be they put in a lot with their career or they put in a lot to their physique and mm -hmm. how they look, the more they want to be brought to the table from a dude. All right. I'm killing the church arena. <laughs> oh, you're going to be up in the oh, church. At this trash age of singleness that I've been through, not y'all, I'm saying just going off of how I was and what I'm assuming I'm still in at this point. I'm going to be all up in the church. I'm about to kill it in there. What church you going to let? Now, mind you, you were going to a church where everybody was 100 years old. So you're going to go to a different church? Absolutely. <laughs> A bunch of different churches. Just the date? Maybe. I don't know. No, not just the date. That'll be the top three priorities. Uh huh. Is dating. Uh huh. I'm going to be all over Southern California, <laughs> San Diego, all these churches oh, going to see here. me. Oh, we're here. We're here in L.A. Oh, am I still in Kentucky? Oh, no. I'm, I can't be back home. No. <laughs> oh, you know. Because not... all the kids got me tied down. I can't get nowhere. All the baby's mamas. <laughs> <laughs> no you think you would be a dad by now regardless? i would be a horrible i would be a definitely involved father but i would probably definitely have at least two three kids you don't think you would have kept it wrapped up to keep from uh, no okay <laughs> i was stupid okay i was surrounded by stupidity you right you stupid is a stupid ass. yeah no it was the environment uh, kudos, I get one of my closest friends. We've known each other our entire lives, literally, in, since Pampers. He got he got married last year, the year before? Yeah, the year before. Kudos to him. Because he No, don't not have a no single baby. child. Doing everything. Now, granted, I wasn't trash, trash, but I think I would have definitely fell into some BS mm -hmm. eventually. Mm -hmm. I was already skating on the on the border, so. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, I, I definitely would have lost my balance at least once. Yeah. If not twice. Three times later. Three times later. Um, let me think. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Church. I'll be out here. If I'm in California, I'm, I'm in the churches. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, looking for, I'm, I'm looking for a close relationship with the Lord and you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I'm out here and I'm an actress still in the content creator, I definitely will have made... Okay, so what I will have done well with is... Okay, well, I haven't, I have a preference to dating black men. And I haven't worked on many black shows. So I don't know (laughs) if I would be dating any actors because most of the shows I work on, I'm working with people who don't look like me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. This is what, this is what would have happened. Somebody, I don't think I would do well with the apps. I don't think I would do well. I would be way too nervous. So I would have to be at networking events like with my with the acquaintances that I know that are in their 40s that are still trying to be out here in these streets. I would have to go places with them because I don't think I would do. I know apps are now a part of it. You got to do the swiping. You got to. My ick factor is so high, though. Mm-hmm. Like of how quickly I get turned off by somebody that I just don't even think that the I'm trying to think if I have any. I have friends that didn't do apps. I have friends that were just like didn't do apps when recent. Oh, OK. Yeah. Friends that have come off the market that did not use apps. Now, I also have friends that are still on the market using apps and having a good time. Mm-hmm. They would have to convince me how to do it they would have to be like angel i would also probably take uh take a page out of my one sorrows book and go places and date versus dating here like purposefully taking a trip to houston different yeah cities yeah yeah purposefully going to dc yeah yeah this is based off what i know now because i would i would do the same thing Uh if i was trying to think if I was still back into I don't know what I, what it I was so young I don't know I have no idea what I would do different but knowing what I know now it would be yeah. the churches and then probably once a month going to a different city yeah and just lollygagging lollygagging <laughs> Portia Renee asked so I got a question any man who isn't married by 40 plus is trash no I'm yes. saying I would be I I say potentially yes I'm saying I would be just off how I <laughs> how I dated before married. Like when I I didn't uh, I didn't like try hard any relationship. If it wasn't if it was like tension or argument, I'd just sorry we ain't nothing. Serious. I didn't argue with anybody when I was <laughs> yeah. when I was running around. I didn't we didn't bicker or argue. Like why am I, I ain't putting no stress into this? It's, we ain't together. Get out of here. I'm moving on. Yeah. So and I know I would have continued that way. Yeah. I, I, I'm going off of the personality that I've always had Mm -hmm. and also what I know now. And because I have always been a very, it's been hard for me. I tried for one period of time to juggle dating multiple people and I did not do a good job Mm. at all. Um, so I, I think I would like struggle. Now to answer your question, a man who who's at forty that's never married, um, uh, who's forty plus, a man in my opinion, this is my opinion and this is and this is the research that I've done or the uh case studies that I've looked at, mm-hmm. okay? A man that actually wants to be married, that has not married in their forty pluses is a man that more than likely doesn't actually want to settle down. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, a man who's been married and divorced, that's different. But a man who's like, you know, I've been really, you know, I want to settle down. I want to have kids. He's doesn't. Um, I the reason I strongly disagree because I know men that fit this category. You told me that when I asked you this, you were like, yeah, yeah. What? 
When I asked you this. No, no. Now that I'm sitting here thinking about individuals, I'm like, no, I know men that cool. didn't get married. Ike. He got to a point. But he wasn't in his 40s. Yes, he was. Ike is much older than us. Is he older? Yes. Mm. And he was just like, I want to settle down and I want to be married. I want a wife. Tank, you need to introduce me to some good, wholesome women. He was 40 when he got married. Yeah. I think you'd have made that man a lot. All right, maybe he was 39. Makes a difference. It don't. I do. I think so. Richard? Richard going to make an excellent husband. He was one of those people where he always wanted to be single, never want... Never wanted to get married. That just never wanted kids. He finally met that right one. And I done heard this man talk real different. Keep going. That's all I'm saying. I know men that fit this description. Not to say all men wait uh, are in there. D- don't everybody think, oh, by the time I'm 30, I want to be married. By the time I'm 35, I want to be married. No, some men, maybe they think that people change. We've all changed. Everybody, everybody changed. I'm not the same man you married. I'm not saying, man, you was dating. People change. I'm not saying that all men 40 plus that ain't never been married don't make good husbands or don't want to be married. People change. You can't say that. I, I did say it, though. Okay, you can say it. You can be wrong. You've been and wrong before. I can before. be right, too. What I'm saying is on the the average dude, I asked, this is the thing. He's changing his two now. I asked him to go through the list of folk that he knew that were in their 40s, male that weren't married. And I said, would you say <laughs> that majority of them are not the type of dude that really honestly like want to get, they're still in their F, they're still F boys, even if they're trying to like, because at that time it was brought up because we were, there was somebody who was interested in our friend. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and that was, okay. but wait, 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 let me okay, finish. And I was like, huh, thinking about it. I said, what, do we know of any men that honestly have had the same type of when we think about when we think about the pressure that's put on women to get married and how we end up being hardwired with this desire, not all women, desire to be married and most of us are not trying to wait until we're 40 to get married, but sometimes that is what happens just because the literal effort into trying to find the person to marry or who we want to be with is just a struggle and a half Mm -hmm. versus men when they are in their thirties, it's not that they're struggling to find the person that they want to marry. They're really, their intentions are not actually set on that. And a lot of them are really just F boys that are not willing to admit that. So in their forties, a lot, not all, a, a lot, not all, are still just F-boys that haven't really just come to grips with. Now, you know, if you really wanted to get married, you yeah. have dated a lot of wonderful people that you could have. Thank you, Tammy. She said, same for women. Okay, what I was going to say. Oh, no, I wouldn't agree. I would. I, no, uh, I mean, only, and that's only because majority of the women that I know really, really, really want, and then they end up messing with dudes that be F boys that are like, they get what they want and then they do. Peace right. out. But go ahead. When you asked me that, the person, you said somebody was interested in, in, a, in our, one of our friends. The person I was thinking of, I was thinking of people like him. And I'm like, yes, that is true. But I asked you and I said, go through your friends. I didn't say, just think of people. I like was thinking him. of uh, people that were still single. I'm talking about people that were still single leading up and in their fours that aren't anymore. Well, there you only named one that got married in their forties, right? I named two, but you said, well, no, yeah, the one. Yeah, I was about to say, okay, there's only one that's still that out, got married. Out of him and his group, he's not the only one that was that was running to me like, hey, like what's up? Like we need, like we need some, we need this, we need that. I wasn't cool with them dudes like that because that that was like, look, I don't know y'all like that. I know him, so I ain't gonna. I'm not putting limitations on men. I'm just saying. I don't, if your actions don't match your words, it's like okay. somebody. The difference lying. is I think you are equating it to women in 40 plus that have been wanting that versus a man that's in 40 plus that is now looking for that. That's the difference. And I'm saying 
that a Women lot of change men, in their 40s. So whenever the, he's in his 40s, he's that, like, hey. And what I'm saying is, is that a lot of times those men who are changing in their 40s are saying, I want that. They have a lot of F boy habits that have not just fallen off. OK. Like you did. You have changed from your 20s to now 40s. But that was a gradual change. That wasn't like. And now I am this man in his 40s that has all these, you know, things that I, you know. A desire that have nothing to do with anyone else or um, that their family, their nuclear family that they've created is now more important than any of those other things. Most of the women that I know, and I'm, and I'm mo mainly friends with women, have actually diligently been dating with the purpose of getting married. And because women are not the ones out here proposing, if the proposal never comes... They still just be single where m most of the dudes who are not married, they have had no intentions on getting married in any of their thirties. They are out here being F boys. Most, not all. Most. I even asked Kevin, I said, yo, do you have any friends? Kevin, that nigga's a horrible example. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm about to say. Go ahead. Why are you saying he's a horrible example? I can already what? tell you, go ahead. No, you tell me what you already thought. When you go and ask, if you ask Kevin about friends that are uh, men that are in their 30s going up to their 40s that have never been, basically the same question that you asked me. Did he know any, men's, any men in their 40s uh -huh. that had not been married that he would, would, he would be like, no, they, that's somebody that would be like a good husband. And he sat there and thought about it for a while, went through <laughs> his friend list, and he was like, or not he just list, men that he knew. Okay. When I when I say the reason I say he's a horrible example, Kevin has surrounded himself by a toxic comedian. <laughs> we see the vein in which these people operate in. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, you just said it. I just said it too. Mm -hmm. I just and at one point in time, he was saying the same thing I was saying. Let me tell you, I'm a woman that wears many hats. I'm an actress. I'm a podcast host. I'm a rapper, but guess what? I am also an e-commerce merchant. Yes, and when I tell you, probably of the, all the things I know the least, that is the category <laughs> that is one that I felt the least knowledgeable about. But let me tell you, now I am selling all of my amazing self-care products for Shop Mama Likes on Shopify because it's so easy. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without Shopify. Shopify is a global e-commerce platform that helps you sell every stage at every stage of your business from the launch of your online shop stage to the first real life store stage and all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage ah, Shopify is there to help you grow whether you're selling scented lotion or offering outdoor outfits Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system whether wherever or whatever you're selling Shopify's got you covered Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with inter the internet's best converting checkout 36% better on average compared to other leading e-commerce platforms and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify magic your AI powered all star we absolutely love Shopify Marcus uses it for his beard and body butter I use it for my self-care shop and the reason why we chose Shopify is because it was a platform that we could actually learn and understand because we didn't go to school for e-commerce business so we needed something that was going to help us in our little tiny businesses and uh be with us as we grow them into you know just multi-million dollar companies okay um uh, so shopify powers 10 percent of all e-commerce in the u.s and shopify is the global force behind all birds rothy's in brooklinens and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries did we say it's powers mama likes yes it does <laughs> plus shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow grow with shopify Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash argue. Argue. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash argue. Argue. Now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash argue. Argue. I think that I would definitely go to places 
where oh, that's another reason why I wouldn't probably date here. Here in particular, we breed out here in L.A. F boys that stay F boys well into their 60s that are like, yeah, no, I will not be marrying. I don't want to be married. In me dating in my 30s, I would still be the same angel as far as in my desire would be to be married. So dating out here, I I would realize that I was, I, the odds would be against me mm-hmm. greatly. So, so these single women that have been meeting these men, are they, they in, out here where we are outside of the one? My friend, what you mean? Outside of the one. Women do it again. Oh yeah, I got that several. Who? You want me to say their names oh, on well, no, here? No. <laughs> you um, forget that I am. You, I think you say several, and I can name like three, maybe four off the top of my head. You make it sound like this is like forty women or something. Yes, you forget that I ha- am a part of a very large sorority, and you also forget that I'm also a part of. But you say, all right, all right. Let me say, say what you say. You, 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 your homegirls and all these, you ain't in all these people's single lives and dating and what's going on. What I know is what I know. I have childhood friends outside of my best friend who doesn't fall in this category because she has been married okay. before that have yet to get married that have been wanting to be married since we were kids. All right. I don't know why you think I'm, I'm trying to cap. About it? I'm being dead serious. No, I ain't saying you capping. That's what it sounded like. Oh, okay. You said outside of here, outside of Nina, your nose is sweating so bad. Because it's hot in here. Um, of hell, we have people in our, now, I don't know these pe- people personally. We have people in our Patreon that are like, the, the dating pool is full of piss. Some have been married before. Some have not, but they have the desire to. Excuse me. They have the desire no. to be. But what I said at the beginning, and you actually agreed with me, is not all men that are yeah. 40 plus. That's all I said at the beginning. And you were like, nope. And then you said not all, but a lot. I'm just saying not all men that are 40 plus that have never been married are trash. Some there are men out there that do want to get married and be in a good marriage. Listen, as Marcus pointed out in his own example of himself, he said if he was not married and he was 42, you said you would be what? If my best friend, if my best friend, <laughs> you were trash. my best friend, James, my best friend, BJ, uh, uh, even Greg, all of these men, if we were all single, we, none of us dated the same. We are all completely different people when it came to dating. They, they if they were single, let, let me finish. I haven't if they, said anything. All right, if they were single at 42, they would honestly be like, like my friend that just got married. Wanted a wife, wanted to get settled, and was looking for that. He didn't start looking for that until he was in his late 30s. It took two, and then he finally got that. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I thought because I remember he wanted to bring somebody to our wedding. That was not. But no, the way he posed it. He I, lied. <laughs> the way he posed it to me was. It was somebody that he really considered to be special. And that's the reason why he wanted. Now, whether, how it turned out, it don't always obviously turn out the way you want it to. But you name, name it off BJ, name it off Greg. These are people who all got married in their uh, I'm saying, 30s. I'm going off the way we dated. We mean, you know, BJ was never a dater. The way we dated, if we, I'm going off of when, the way I dated, if I was still single at this point, at 42, how I think I would be at the age of 42. Going off the way, and I got married, uh, I got married before James, I got married before BJ. And had I dated, had they dated the way they did, if they decided I definitely want to get married at 40, at, at this age, how they would present. So now we're just talking about two different points, though. No, we're not. Yes. The reason why I'm saying we're talking about two different points is that regardless of the way they dated in those younger period of time, because they had the intention of wanting to get married, 
they didn't wait until half of their life was over to get married. When they found the person that they really like, with that they were like, "This is this is it." There was no there was no stringing them along type of situation. It was, "I am getting married," and the reason why I put this more on men than on women is because, as they all point out statistically, there are less men than there are women. So the supply demand is in favor of men. Men have a better chance of, if they have a desire to be married, of actually finding a spouse to marry. Where because of the side that we're on as women, where there are more of us than there are men, and because we've been conditioned now, there are women now in this day and age that are like, hell no, I don't want to get married. I don't want it. I don't, I don't want no parts of it. That's them. But there's still some of us that are truly like, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what I say. I can't shake this feeling of wanting to be with a singular person. This is how you end up with women who ignore the red flags. This is the reason why I don't, I don't mock uh, Risa Tisa I get we've been so conditioned to wanting to get married we will marry the trash that's in front of us so that's the reason why I said it's a different situation when it comes to men and women when I when I uh, refer to this because culturally we've been conditioned so very differently so I still stand on what I say if a dude is well into is a dude is inside of his 40s and he's like yeah, yeah, I think it's time for me to settle down. If he had, if he had like F boy tendencies in his 30s, there's a good chance he's going to still have some of those tendencies in his 40s. Now, some men didn't have F boy tendencies in their 30s. That's all I'm saying. But for the most part, those dudes got married in their 30s. Or even their 20s. Or their 40s. That's what I'm saying. I, listen, I be talking to the women. More than probably you talk to the men. I be talking to the single women. Okay, but I know the single men. Uh, I'm saying, but I talk okay. to single yeah. women. I see what you're saying. You be talking to the single men or you just saying you know your friend base? I've talked to men. I know men. I know men who know men. <laughs> I know men who we, who have these conversations on the golf course. Single ass men that's looking to settle down. Some have dated, have been in long relationships. On the golf that course that you just started courses. going to. Yeah, I've been to quite a few. We ain't never repeated the same one. Um, that have, that have had F-boy energy, that have had long relationships that didn't work out, that at this stage in life want to get married. Yeah, and Portia, I agree. I ain't I, saying it's all of them, 100% of them, but there are out there. Like, we've already said that and agreed on it. Um, And, and Portia, I agree, which is, uh, not Portia, it's Tammy. I agree that we, uh, as women, if we get strung along, we have to take accountability for not setting a boundary but yet again we're fighting against women we're fighting against the mentality of needing to be chosen needing to be married needing to have children this is not this, something this is what I, this this what is, I let me finish Go ahead. this is not something that has been drilled into men as harshly as it has been our value literal value Literal value used to be tied to those three things where a man's value with the more of their like things that they have to like um, deprogram themselves is their value being tied to their salary. That has never been something that has been pushed in us is that the you're only valuable if you make X amount of money. It's always been pushed into us. You're valuable if another if a man wants to marry you, if a man wants to if you can bear children. Go ahead. What I will say, like everybody's like, where are these men at? Where are these men at? Y'all have to go where the men are. Do men activities. Golfing. Angel thinks there's a bunch of tons of hoes on the golf course. There ain't. Go be one on the golf course. 
You, it's going. I don't. I can't guarantee you that it's going to be men there that you're attracted to. But that's what men do. Go to basketball courts. Go to sports games. This is where men are. Do men activities. It says there's not a need to be chosen. That is a desire. Women need to evolve into singular beings. Now that we have the means to provide ourselves, I agree. I think I think some women have definitely mastered that, but I think it is a lot harder. It's a lot easier said than done for a lot of women. And I think it's also easier said than done um, with uh, even with <laughs> what he just said, go to where the men are. That's also easier said than done. Again, I have friends that know how to work the day naps and know how to go on great dates. That does not always equate to. Finding a dude that wants to take the date to the level in which you want to go. Yeah, of to. course not. Uh, so in in um, Michelle, listen, you might find the diamond in the rough that's in their fifties that's never been married. That's a man. You might that wants to be married. What's was that? That was just a stipulation we put on it. Like, what's the desire in? I understand the desire in wanting somebody that's never been married, but at a certain age. Is that still as important? I think. I'm asking because I don't know. I, if, I'm thinking if I was 42, if I'm out here dating, I'm not going to turn my nose up. Even if I had never been married, I'm not going to turn my nose up at someone who was married, at a woman that has been married before. Um, I think that it's just the similarity of lifestyle and the similarity of what type of history you bring to the table like it makes sense to me when someone in their 20s says they don't want to be with someone who's had children. But then when I hear someone in their late 30s say they can only be with someone who doesn't have children, I'm like, well, your pool of potential yeah. is getting smaller. I think uh, I think the more the, the more mature you are in age, the more life experience that will possibly have happened with the persons or person uh, that you end up dating. Um. Because obviously, if you date, if a man is dating a woman that's in in her fifties, there's a good chance she's already had kids if she wanted kids. Because now her biological clock has determined that it's more than likely too late to have kids. So, for if a man is in his fifties and he's like, "I want to marry a woman that's my peer," and he says, "I don't want her to have kids," while there are women out there who don't have kids at all, again. He's shrunk his dating pool because most women who've desired kids then already made that happen because their biological clock said either do it now or leave me be. So, um, I, and yes, uh, hot dolphin 03. I think it always depends on, on how the marriage ended because some dudes be trash inside of marriage. So marriage does not, automatically make them not an F boy. It just means that they actually did desire to be married. <laughs> now, for what reason? And we'll never know unless you talk to them. Of course, same goes for women. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There are trash women out there. I just think the indicators look different. F, I, I think, uh, how we how a dude finds out if a chick is trash has less to do with um, whether she's been married or not, but more to do with how she actually behaves with people. I know people, women who want to be married, want to be wives, but are just terrible at how they speak to people. They have terrible, nasty ass attitudes. Yeah, I know some of them. They're single and think they're going to find somebody, too. Yeah. Some of them have found somebody. That ain't going to lie. That, but that's what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think it has less to do with their desire to be married, but more to do just with their personality. Michelle Hill, she says, my angel, my issues, you're making broad statements that are factors, but not absolute. I'm making statements with conditions, though. I said most, not all. I didn't say every one. I said a lot of. And even in the examples that Marcus gave, they were a small number compared to the broad amount of men that he knows. 
He gave y'all one example of a man in his 40s that he knows that got married in his 40s. That like was Hold dating, on, let dating. Me go back. No, I got some cousins that got recently. We ain't close. Like I know me. I don't be keeping up with people like that. I know I got two cousins that recently got married. One's forty five, had for been single time. for the first time, and the Who other was one. That cousin? It's on uh, my uncle Chink and them side. I can't remember. They live in Florida. Uh, what's it? I can't. I think his name. His my name might be Anthony. But you don't. You don't know what no, type of saying, dude I he don't, is. Say what? You don't. But you don't know what type of dude he is. I knew at one point in time he was all over the place. So what but. I'm saying of uh, I'm saying of Marcus's friends, the people that he can attest to, like how they are as a husband yeah, the people, and how the people that I know that I'm giving examples of, I know very closely. Yes, like I know them very closely. Uh, we have a relationship. Not to say you ain't close to the people, but this ain't like a. Not discount your ref. This ain't like a fraternity where I just know them through people, and we just and like I know 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 these people. Um, and I don't know a lot of single men. The single men that I do know that are single, um, they're now, like I said, the one is a strong example because, like I said, he never was ever looking at marriage at all. He never wanted a relationship. He never wanted a girlfriend. And now he's talking about all of that. Um, and the other one that was came to me, he was running around here wildly <laughs> from, from state to state, country to country, City to city, he was all over the place. And I remember we was at the gym one time. He was like, "Man, I, I want. I, I, it's time for me to settle down. I want you know, good woman. I want to be a husband. And want the whole picket fence, all of that." And when I started, I was like, "Oh, I got a couple of homegirls." He was like, "Look, man, I don't want nobody you used to date. It ain't nobody yeah. I used to date, man. This is my friend, like cousins." But um, anyway, those are the examples I was given. That's why I was like, "I ain't gonna say all because I know I know he ain't the only one out of the billions of men on this planet." Um, or those two examples. No, I just think it's it's uh, like more more of finding a diamond in a rough. Michelle says she has 10 examples of men on the top of her head. Girl, you shouldn't be telling me. You should be telling it to the single women in this Patreon that have been waiting to find somebody good. You holding out. Because that don't make no sense. If I had If I had 10 examples of dudes, mind you, people ask me and Marcus all the time, do they not? Marcus, especially our female friends, hook me up with a good dude that's single, that's my age. And what do we what do we tell them? Nine times out of ten, we don't know no single men. Not only that, the ones that we do know, typically we're like I'm trying to think, who do I know that's single? But I'm saying what do we usually say though? They trash. That's all but I'm the, saying. I, but we say that like, yeah, they trash, but I'm like, who name name some single dudes. Name some single dudes yeah. that I know of. Okay, I can. I got D. Uh, well, you, you, you do like this. Uh huh. That's trash. But he's always he's he, man. That's a oh, that's a beautiful example. He's always wanted to have something special, but he's just a trash individual. I don't think he's always <laughs> wanted to be married. No, no. Well, he did. Oh well, I don't know. Anyway. Trash. We, we, we don't fully know if. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, no, no, no. No, I know that. No, that is the, the, well, the reason why I know that is because you have, for me, you have had to say something or have done something to make me say he's never said anything that is just, it's not considered. <laughs> but he's never been like, he's he never going to say that. No, whatever. You just trying anyway, to Anyway, he that. might be. We don't know if he's a bad yeah. idea for a man or a woman. Anyway, uh, that's Marcus's judgment. Well, <laughs> no, I can tell you right. No, you brought that to me. I didn't. I wasn't even thinking that. <laughs> no, and you was like, um, no, it's no. <laughs> it's never been anyway, a, um, on that. Uh, I, you want me to keep naming folk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh shoot! I, if I'm going to say the person's name, but you don't know, you don't know them personally. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying we's people that I know, single people that I know. I gotta go to other people that I know. That know somebody single. I know a lot of from going to the University of Kentucky in um, at UK. There was a good mix of us guys and girls. The dudes that are still single. We now Tony. They say Tony, Tony Baker was married. Yeah. So that he we ain't counting him. We're talking about people who've never been married, and 
<laughs> I can't say. First of all, that the two examples we gave are just I wouldn't do that. Just even if they were marriage potential, they're not good success potential. So I <laughs> this is like you y'all not gonna build together. It's gonna be you building and him climbing. Um uh, uh what is about to say? Uh <laughs> Um, oh, you! I was about to name this dude, but you don't. It was so funny. I was asking about this one person who, in my mind, in college, just how stupid I was, didn't know game was being ran. Thought, oh my god, this person is going to make a great husband. He's just going to. It's going to be his life. It's just going to flourish. He'll have you. This man is a whore. He's in his 40s now. He's still out here being a whore. He's having a great time. But someone who I thought would have been off of these streets, but he don't want to yeah, be. If I think back that far, I'm going off people that I know that I still talk to today. If I go back of me, people that I like know from the past. um, Well, you got to understand for me, I don't try to keep in close um, contact with any uh, with most of my male friends yeah. once I got married. Now we are still like we kind of still keep tabs on each other via excuse me, social media, but being because we have our like kind of what's that word? Our agreement of we're not making no well one we're not making any new friends that like are of the opposite gender. Yeah. That like I'm not yeah like yeah but he's he's these people that I don't even keep in contact with I'm just saying like it would be the same damn near the same thing that's like we don't talk we just cool and know each other Pete is married yeah my brother's married um going off of that the same way you thinking of them I'm going back like there's dudes that I know that I used to run with that I never talked to but I was hey man what's up I ain't see you in 20 years what's going on I'm thinking back to them. Yeah. So yeah. No. 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 And I'm. What I'm saying is, if if any of them have not been married, and you know that they're still not married, based off of what you've known about them, yeah, would you say no? That's just a good dude that probably just didn't want to be married. The one I used to, the tall one. I don't remember when you said you, that. Which uh, I was thinking. Huh? <laughs> you remember? <laughs> you I know that rung a bell. It rung a bit of a bell, yeah. So he, that was one who he would date. He was an F boy. But the last I got a tab on him, it was just like, no, he's still looking for. Mm-hmm. And he's he might be older than you. And you think he's still looking for and he hasn't found because he honestly hasn't found? Or do you think he just hasn't really clicked fully I know over. the two that he was trying to lock down we were like please don't <laughs> 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 and luckily it didn't work out with either of them but he was one it was we just don't like, need to kick y'all out the conversation we just don't want to put people's names yeah we ain't trying to put people's names we uh we talking about bob my uh, friend bob <laughs> that i used to run with he uh the, the last time i got tabs on he would have definitely he was definitely still single in his 40s Cause I know he's older. He might be Angel's age or older. Um, and he, uh, at one point in time, he had two like long term girlfriends. But then out that before and after, he was you know just messing around. And the last time I got tabs on him, which wasn't, uh, was after he had turned forty. He was already in his forties. He was still hadn't got married. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Bob. He's a good guy. Uh, <laughs> just like, please don't. He's got a child though. He's got. One or two by one of the long term. One of the yeah. long term, uh, but he didn't lock them down. He tried, and thank God it didn't work out. What do you mean he tried? Did he propose? He, I don't know if it got that far, but he was on the. He was going to. I think at one point. What made him change his mind? Her, <laughs> like she was trash. <laughs> uh, trash ass women. Uh, Kayla says, "Do you think there's a correlation between people raising a two parent home versus?" Not when it comes to when they aspire to settle or marry. Maybe that's that's something that I don't think I've ever looked really closely at. Yeah, uh, I haven't looked closely at it either. Because um, I never have an expectation as far as in like I wasn't looking for a man who had who was married. I mean, who's married, whose parents were married. 
And that's probably because my parents never married. So I was not about to put that expectation on anybody else. And I also, oh, I also personally have had a desire to marry, even though I don't feel like a good example was ever set in front of me as a child outside of my aunt and uncle. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I never like to put things on single parent versus two parent because the examples that I know of personally, everything swings both directions. Like, yeah. oh, you know, you know, takes a real man to raise a child. I know some men that were raised by their fathers that are trash dudes, ain't no good, ain't even real men. I know men, grown men that were raised by their mother and only their mother that are true men, true examples of men and manhood and masculinity. Um, but if I think back, so her uh, boyfriend mm-hmm. has never been married. And it looks like it's tracking that way. But they then they've been together though since. Wait a minute, is she still with? Um. Oh, I don't know why I thought she was with somebody in the crew. She that was a long, long time ago. Oh, I thought that. Oh, you right. Yeah, you right. Yeah, you've met all these people. Anyway, right. um. Yeah, Bobby. But he's yeah. older. Uh huh. Earl. Is older <laughs> to not cut y'all out. <laughs> now, how long they been together? Uh, they've been together for a while now, though. But by, when they got, he's older, older. Mm-hmm. By the time they got together, he was already at least forty-two. And he he'd never been. No. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I know. I, I had to expand my thinking because I'm thinking of dudes I know. Dudes I know. I'm like, what about on, the I people? Some, yeah. That your friends are dating. Yeah. I, I mean, I still stand by what I say. I'm glad. Mich- Listen, y'all we didn't need say to the holler. same thing, though. Yeah, no, we, somebody we, said. We agreed. It's just, I, uh, it just Angel has to be writer. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm messing with you, girl. I think, I just think it's a hard truth that is. Y'all like these names? I think. Earl, Bob. I think it's just a hard <laughs> truth and a hard, unfortunate truth. Now, Sebastian. He, you know. But this is why this is why I will always How long encourage. Is this episode being? It's long. We about to get off. This is why I will always encourage my women in their forties to date younger. If you've been over here, out here, really putting in the work, you know, wanting to come off the market, and you ain't, uh, and and you feel like, no, nah, I want somebody that wants what I want and has that bigger desire. Go and drop down some years. Yeah. Drop now, let down, me tell you what. <laughs> drop down into them 30s. Let me tell you what. You can get a, you can get you a younger man. Now, he may, I don't know. If you in your, you know, late 30s, early 40s, dating a little bit younger, if he got his stuff together, you a little safer than dating younger than if you was in your early 30s. Yeah. Because he done matured a little bit. Um, That's And what I'm like saying. somebody said it back then, don't discount other races. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We talking. We ain't, we ain't race discriminating over here. The only reason I'm I'm referring to. I know I, I know some of y'all want you a Joshy in your life. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm only referring to black men because black men are really the only people that I actually even have a lot of personal like relationships with outside of marriage and dating. Yeah. It's mainly black men. I don't really Man. know culturally what's happening with I white had, Asians or Latinos. I had some white coworkers, a uh, men, they date different. That that the, the stuff that they be doing mm. on the first dates and not knowing people's last names, it just blew. I was like, God dang, y'all will do anything. Mm-hmm. I would felt like oh, felt a virgin around me. <laughs> They're like, you did what to who? Mm. When? Listen, how many times? And, 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 and I'm telling, I'm saying this, I am saying this, not because I personally have experienced it. Obviously, I came off the market in my 20s, but all I have is girlfriends. I only got like two close guy friends. And a lot of my girlfriends have either been on the market way longer than what they have wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And so I've watched their dating experience. Or they were off the market, went back on the market, and have been, like, trying to fumble through the dating um, arena. Mm-hmm. And so when I asked Marcus and um, Kevin the question, and I think I asked I think I think asked another one of my guy friends, there was a similar answer for all, for all of them. 
granted you you might be a Michelle Hill and know these ministers <laughs> That Somebody it, it, said, my white boy is so sweet. I'm going to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that know, Go ahead. That know all these ministers that have waited, that focused on the ministry and waited 10 years. In the case that I know, most ministers that I know that are single are also whores. Yeah, I wouldn't. I look, I was about to say, <laughs> this is just what I wouldn't I know, advise though. nobody to try to settle down with no single minister that's been uh, single most of his life. God dang. Just the, from the examples that I know on that. Um, but no, I, yeah, I had to expand to, like I said, my, all my homegirls are in, in relationships or married. Um, if I extend out, we got one of, one of our, I can't, but she's my homegirl. We cool. Um, I don't know. She had no problem. She ain't, I don't even, I don't remember which side of the fence she's on now, mm-hmm. but she never had a problem getting phone dudes would throw their phone number at her. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, we don't, and we would all sit back. It's like. What? Why? What is going? How does she do this? Like mm-hmm. She <laughs> leaves the club and just have a purse full of numbers. It's like what happened in there? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's just. I'm not saying it's impossible. You might be able to find. Listen, we saw on a love on stage. Was that what it was called? Mm-hmm. Love on stage. There were people that were a little more mature. Um, I don't think they were in their 40s. They were in their 30s, though, that were able to find love that had never been married before. Um, but I will say sometimes it is hard for an older dog to learn new tricks. And so you just got to really see if the F boy is dead and gone. Remember Elijah? What was it, Elijah Juan? You remember oh, he yeah. said oh, such and such is gone. And now this guy oh, is yeah. here. And we that, were like that, he's an extremely character. He's an extreme character. It it listen, it sometimes takes time to become a new person. Woody? We watched Woody change. Woody was in his thirties. Yeah, no, I'm saying like he was like a different Yeah, you yeah, know. Like, or his dating was different. And then even his friends was like, nah, nah he ain't gonna look. Yeah, I was the biggest one to stick suck my foot in my mouth on that one because he came out like that first episode when I seen him cry over something he said yeah. about her. I said, "Oh, this boy is serious, serious." And the thing <laughs> is, is that I don't. I, uh, and let me let me make sure it's clear. I don't think because of a dude in his twenties is out here like dating, dating, like being out here being a mm mm mm, that he in his thirties can't be like now it's time. I just feel like. If your boyish games carry too far into your later years, it's going to be harder to shake those off. Yeah. Just like you did. You shook yours off. You were like, I'm going to be yeah. out here. And then yeah, me, I high. wasn't like hopping around like crazy. I just I just made myself comfortable. Like I didn't, uh, I wasn't looking for girlfriends at any time. I wasn't uh, looking for anything serious. And I was just comfortable with that. And anybody I was talking to knew that. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, listen. We both have older men in our family that are, that have been, and that are still those dudes that's out here in these streets. <laughs> so we know both exist. Yeah. So, you know, just find the one that works best for you. That's that. And I would be the one still out here hunting. I'd be in these 40s comments like... <laughs> Michelle, he introduced me to one of your friends. I already, I already knew to go where the women were, so <laughs> I'd be in the comments too. Hey, y'all, I'm right over here. Listen, Send. I would be, I would be DMing Michelle. Don't tell me you got you ten examples of men in their fifties and not send me a be- at least five. That's where I would be at. Give me the references, sis. All right, guys. We hope you've enjoyed this extended episode. Thank you all for joining us a couple of days early if you're in Patreon. Um, Patreon, uh, Cooking with the Tanksleys is coming back. We're going to do it a little bit different, and I'm actually really excited about it. Um, It's going to actually be pre-recorded in order to be able to edit together for fun. Um, And I think y'all are going to have a good time watching it, but it'll be exclusively for you all. Nobody else. Just Patreon. Just the Patreon. Um, and you can get stuff from shopmamalikes.com for beauty. We have moisturizer, skin care, uh, excuse me, moisturizer, makeup remover, a face scrub, and a clay mask. You can still get tickets to Here's the Thing, whether it be Raleigh, Birmingham, Philadelphia, or Detroit. Those tickets are still available. And I think that's all I have to say. Follow me on all platforms. Absolutely.
Y'all know where to find me. Thank y'all for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. You ain't gonna say nothing about man shit. Young, hey, make sure y'all hit up man shit. Uh, I was gonna say patreon.com slash man shit. M A N S H Y T dot com. That's my beard and body butter. Make sure y'all check that out. Um, I'm getting the stuff out. Look, we had an unfortunate situation last week or this week. Last week, because this when mm-hmm. this is going up with uh, the orders, the post office. They done. Lo- it's the first time it's done happened with this particular post office, this building. They done lost one of the packages, but we got that out. But anyway, make sure y'all go check that out. It's a good time. Yes. Um. So you guys, until next time, y'all be blessed. Have an amazing, an amazing week, and we'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good one, fam. Bye.